Welcome to the Sarcastically Optimistic Podcast with your host, me, Ramel. It's been a while. I say that a lot, but it has been a while because I decided to take a hiatus just to kind of figure out if I want to continue this podcast in general. And if you've stuck around for a while, you know that I do go through those little bouts and phases. And no, I mean, I guess we are back because... You know, the best way to stay consistent is one step at a time, I guess. And, uh, you know, as you can tell from the tone of my voice, I'm still quite unsure if this will even be published or if I want to continue this. But uh, I think seeing this as some sort of colossal being that's really scary, i rather just take it as small as I can and just keep going with it and uh, see where it goes. So as this is an episode that is occurring... Uh, quite into the future uh, since the beginning of this podcast, which was of at uh, is it February of 2022, I believe. So it's been almost two years since this podcast has started, uh, and I'm forever thankful for everything that's happened. And I want to round back to the first topic that I talked about, which was something from a book called Bending Reality by Victoria Song. And it, I mean, the whole book's basis is based around the idea of acting out of two states because there exists only two states like yin and yang, right? Which is uh, contraction and, was it contraction and expansion and contraction? Excuse me. See, uh, this is the problem with not having a script, but uh, contraction and expansion. So what the difference are is between those two is uh, expansion is something, a state in which you are kind of not always like forever mind-boggling grateful for everything but expansion is you're working basically out of a good mood as some people deem it to be i think it's kind of underselling it i believe but expansion is basically you know you're thankful for what you have you understand the capabilities and opportunities that are on your plate and you work from there and you know you're working from like kind of a like a very growth mindset, right? Like you know that you can progress further and further. You can be more than you are now. Not uh, too anxiously knowing that there's so much ahead of you and uh, you kind of uh, psych yourself into not doing anything at all. But understanding that like this episode, embodiment of this episode is that you take things one step at a time and you don't kind of hassle yourself or, or put too much or more unneeded pressure on yourself to be more or be perfect overnight or something like that. So understanding that you have opportunity, that you have all the things that you need in this phase of your life, then that is what expansion is. Now, contraction is like when you feel the opposite, right? Like you have a very fixed mindset. You don't think that uh, you can grow any more than this, that you're kind of stuck, you're complacent. uh, You're not in a place in which uh, you think you can grow from or that you can expand or strengthen anything in your character or in your personality. And that can be very deadly, right? So contraction can also mean that you're closed off from the world, especially emotionally. And we all know that the worst actions that are the worst choices that we make are made out of reaction or solely based on emotion. And I mean, I for one have been uh, in that in those shoes where I have reacted to things so aggressively, unnecessarily, and it's affected my relationships Uh, And it's something I continue to work on, and it's something that I've grown an awareness for uh, for the past couple years and have been continually working on it, you know, trying to not cause unnecessary or unneeded conflict where it doesn't really deserve to be. Um, I heard this really interesting quote the other day, which is a weird tangent, but it's saying it was asking, um, why do we place such a high expectation on other people when we place such a low expectation of ourselves? Meaning that like we're always going about our day and um, I forgot what the specific term is. Uh, I think cynic cynicism where you kind of believe that people are just out to not out to get you, but it's very transactional. You think that people are just doing things in their own self-interest. And if you immediately go into every interaction or maybe you go into your social settings thinking that of new people or even like your older friends, it's not really a a healthy thing to be going about doing because you're in turn pushing people away from doing so. Now, kind of adds on to the idea of, again, contraction that Victoria Song introduces in her book, Bending Reality. And the reason I want to round back to this topic is because I'm recently reading a new book, which actually is funny because it brings up a very, very similar topic in terms of the state that we're in and how we operate. Now, the book is called uh, You're Too Good to Feel This Bad by Nate Dallas. 
Again, if I butcher names and, and concepts, I'm sorry. I'm just like talking uh, in front of a camera off the top of my head. Uh, but You're Too Good to Feel This Bad is the book. And um, if you've never been into improvement or you seek to improve and you've never really dived into any sort of material pertaining to improvement or self-improvement, I know it's an icky term nowadays, self-help, self-help gurus and stuff. But Nate Dallas really outlines all the fundamental ideas of everything that you need to understand if you're going to progress forward uh, as an individual, right? If you want to build up your character, all the uh, things ranging from, you know, your mindset or just simple physical movement like exercise and mindfulness and, um, you know, reactivity, right? Like controlling your emotions. So again, if you've never delved into the world of like self-development, uh, things like that, of that nature, then I highly recommend this book being your first book because it literally lists out everything, all the basics that you need to go move forward and do something with your life, as opposed to going through hundreds of self-help books like, you know, me, uh, that lists out basically the same message. And Nate Dallas is kind enough. Uh, the whole basis of the book is that he experiments with all the things of these self-help books have promoted for how many years now, starting with like Tony Robbins or even uh, Jim Rohn, which I, I think is an exception because he's, he's brilliant. But he's tried and tested every single principle that you would typically read in a self-help book for himself and figured out what works for him. And Again, like it's not like a very solid prescription for what you should be doing, but it's just a jumping off point of someone who has tried and tested these things. And he does mention the experimentations that he uh, he goes through as he's kind of figuring out, you know, what's the, the optimal amount of sleep that he needs or uh, how does he feel in the morning if he skips uh, breakfast, you know, intermittent fasting, things like that. Or like how does he feel like if he walks every day um, as opposed to like every other day. So again, I highly recommend this book. So going back to the topic at hand, the reason why it's really funny that he brings it up is because, again, we talked about it in the very first episode about like just your state of being, right? Victoria Songs mentions that it's really boiled down to two states, which is contraction and expansion. And Nate Dallas, he doesn't explicitly say that, but he does say that wherever we're operating from is based on the state that we're in. And that means, and that don't get them confused with like your emotion, right? So he has this cascading diagram, which he kind of maps out with his paragraphs, which is basically saying that we have a behavior, which is driven by our emotion, and our emotion is actually driven by our state. So if you're in a state in which you, you know, you're in a state in which you feel inferior to the people around you, that might lead to an emotion of anger or frustration. And then your behavior is going to be someone that, you know, you wouldn't want to be around, uh, but you're promoting, right? So again, state, emotion, and behavior are three separate things, but they're all kind of intertwined with each other. So it's really important to note that Victoria's Song really paves the way uh, in terms of simplicity for understanding what a state is, right? Boiling it down to just simple contraction versus expansion, Uh, But Nate Dallas kind of builds up this map, this uh, entire diagram of which we know that now we have the state in which Victoria's Song introduces. Now we know that that kind of influences the emotion that we kind of fester inside our heart or whatever you want to call it. And then ultimately going to be the behavior in which people interpret our character, right? So it's really, really important to understand that the state in which you're in is the root and cause of everything, uh, literally everything in your life, especially, especially how people kind of um, perceive you to be, which is, it shouldn't be as important, right? Like, I get it. Like, if you're, you know, in your teen years, it's really important. But, you know, if you continue to talk to older folk, they kind of reinforce the message of, you know, as I continue down this road of age, then I more and more understand that people think less of me than I think they do, right? And again, don't let that lesson kind of jade you uh, or make you do some foolish things, but it's something to keep in mind. So the whole idea of state is very spectacular because one, it kind of came up again in my life two years later since the beginning of this podcast. And two, it's something that we kind of take for granted. We don't really think about our state. We always kind of give more light to behavior and especially more light to emotion. That's why there's, you know, a concept of emotional intelligence. And, you know, Nate Dallas kind of 
is implying is that the emotional intelligence is actually based on your state and your state can kind of vary depending on not just day to day, but it can actually vary from hour to hour depending on what you kind of encounter and how you kind of uh, view your encounters, right? So there was a funny quote that he said, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, but he was saying that um, if you encounter one jerk a day, then it's, uh, you know, it's something that you're, it's like a perception, right? Like you encounter one jerk a day, that's kind of, that's just kind of the expectation. But if you encounter like several jerks every day, then you probably are the jerk. And what he means by being a jerk is that like maybe your state is in a different place than you're perceiving it to be. And whatever you perceive is kind of dependent on your state. If you're angry and frustrated with the world, you're going to be kind of angry and frustrated with people that are like happy and joyous. Like, why is that person so happy? Why is it? And if you think about it, if you take like three steps back and think about that questioning of somebody's enjoyment or somebody's high energy, it's kind of icky to think about. You're like, why am I questioning someone else's happiness or how they carry themselves in such sort of way? And rather than just be appreciative of having high energy people in your life. And again, I am, you know, a victim or not a victim, but a, a person in that scenario in which I know that I, I've also been in that position where like, why is it person like so jokingly like this is like not the time or place or, you know, and thinking about it now, I know that maybe during that day or during that hour or, or maybe even just during that little scenario, that little moment, I just didn't appreciate the people that I should have appreciated at the time and you know, that's something, again, I'm fully aware of. I'm kind of building up towards these past couple of years, especially with the pandemic and being alone with your thoughts and just kind of appreciating people for who they are and, you know, the little things that they do for not just you, but for other people. And so the idea of state is extremely, extremely important. And, uh, you know, we have to be really mindful. And Nate Dallas puts up a really, really good point. Again, I'm just a messenger here. I'm trying to compartmentalize and simplify a lot of the things I read just for you to apply to your own day or maybe apply to your own life. But one thing that he mentions is that um, it's really irresponsible for us to not think that our state, uh, to think that it's foolish of us to think that our state doesn't affect other people. And it's completely irresponsible because again, your state leads to your emotion and your emotion leads to your behavior, which is, you know, what you kind of, how you carry yourself around other people, right? That's what your behavior is. And if we think that our state is only affecting us, right? Like, and we're only thinking about us, it's very selfish and irresponsible for us to do because like I said, like in a, in a selfish scenario, a very irresponsible scenario where we think that, you know, it feels good to, you know, go off on someone because of just like a simple thing that they did. Uh, it feels good, I guess, internally, but then give it some time, maybe a couple of hours, you're realizing, man, what did I do? And sometimes the actions that we take when we're in a bad state lead to kind of life-changing and irreversible choices uh, and irredeemable things that you could probably do. And I really hope and I, I really hope, yeah, that people take this in consideration as I am uh, kind of learning myself because it, it is really something that isn't talked about a lot on, you know, the self-development uh, people on YouTube that I see and all the people that uh, I talk to because it's just such a novel niche topic to talk about that state in itself is kind of its own individual uh, sector of life and in which you know, it scarily is kind of intermingled with, with your emotion and your behavior. So kind of going into the new year, I really hope that this was insightful, that it kind of helped in some sort of way, build some sort of uh, mappage to what state is and how it affects and trickles down to really, right, how you carry yourself around other people. And it doesn't, take for you know you looking into the mirror and saying affirmations to yourself to fully appreciate what's around you um, you don't have to make a list of things that you're grateful for something that he recommends is that um, if you do feel that you're in a state maybe it's your body language that you can fix and put your shoulders back or kind of like lift yourself up a little bit do the superman stance if you want to you know uh, you know no matter how foolish you look uh, but i think the most actionable thing that he recommends as well uh, which I'm probably going to start practicing is that instead of listing things down of gratitude, which a lot of people do, because it can get a little, you know, it can get a little 
mundane. It can get a little uh, less spicy over time. You can probably say, like, I enjoy this chair that I sit in, things like that. Rather, use your mind to project moments in your life that you're fully happy, that you know that, because like, we all had those moments and those periods of time in which we knew that we were acting out of a state of happiness or a, a, you know gratefulness or, you know, in Victoria Song's uh, book, of expansion. So identifying those moments in your time here on earth so far, uh, or identifying those experiences and closing your eyes and fully reliving those experiences, at least to kind of put you back into that state of growth mindset of opportunity, seeing every opportunity and not taking the people uh, around you for granted, because we don't, you know, hopefully, I really hope that no one has to go through some sort of drastic uh, occurrence, you know, like a passing away of a loved one and things to realize how finite that we are here, that the time that we have here is so finite. Uh, it's less than we think that we have here. You know, people are saying like, oh, I'm going to be retiring by, you know, 50 or 60. And it's like, how do we even know that we're going to be here tomorrow? I know it's a very morbid thing to think about. But, you know, if you switch it around, it does sound very scarce, like a scarcity mindset. But if you think about it, knowing that we have such little time, you realize why should I waste it? And hopefully that will kind of kind of push you and nudge you towards, again, a mindset of expansion, knowing that you're given this time, you're listening to this podcast, you have things around you. So I strongly urge you, in the words of Victoria's Song and Nate Dallas, and now me, not trying to absorb, you know, the credit of which they've done, but me as a messenger for them to to after this podcast to kind of shut it down, shut down everything that's kind of distracting you and sit with your thoughts for a while. Close your eyes, whether it be in your car or even in your bed, and think about things that led you to experiences, experiences that led to, you know, expansion, things that made you happy. Because we don't need a diary, you don't need to flip through a diary to remember key moments in our lives that we were genuinely happy, that we were just like, kind of living in that moment and we were like laughing to ourselves or we we're smiling like fools and people are like what's what's up and you're like i'm just really happy to be here and if you're not feeling that right now in this given moment think of a time or an experience in which it just kind of makes you smile from from ear to ear right and yeah there's only so many podcasts so many movies so many tv shows so many videos that you can watch that will tell you how to be happy but actually the definition of happiness is up to you. It's really up to you. Some people might find enjoyment in Disneyland, right? Well, I have some friends that say they get headaches from going to Disneyland. And yeah, they're not my friends. At no, I'm just kidding. They're not my friends. Well, oh, that was a weird uh, slip, but uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyways, shut down this podcast. I'm really glad that you're still here with me and still vibing and riding with me. Uh, but I really hope to continue all of this and to kind of bypass all of my insecurities and bypass just the uh, fearful future of where this podcast is going, no matter how many X amount of people are going to be listening to this. But I really hope that uh, you take the time to figure out what those experiences and those events in your life, in your past, right, to visit, to kind of shift you back into the growth mindset that you deserve and to go about and start this new year Um working from an expan a place of expansion, as Victoria Song says. So I love you guys. Thank you so much for listening. I'm really happy to be here, and I really hope that you're happy that you made it to the end of the year. Congratulations, by the way. And uh, yeah, I hope to talk more in the upcoming year with you guys. All right? Catch you, um, I want to say every other Monday, every other Monday. I don't want to make any guarantees, but I'll try to pump out as much as I can for you guys. <laughs> that was weird. Uh, I don't know how to sign off. See ya.